Things with the bloodline are really heating up, so we'll see what's new there. We'll also check out what's going on with Rey Mysterio, Cody Rhodes, and more. Starting things off with Cody Rhodes and his promo from the April 12th edition of SmackDown. Cody kicked off that promo by giving everyone another hint to what it was that The Rock privately gave to Cody in the palm of his hand. Cody said what The Rock gave to him was actually a gift that Cody had first given to The Rock. So whatever it was, The Rock was returning it to Cody. Cody didn't get into any more details besides saying that it was a gift that he first gave to The Rock. But that piece of information does seem to line up with one of the most popular theories. That what The Rock did was return the Rolex watch to Cody Rhodes that he had the number 40 on it. The same watch that Cody gifted himself to all the members of the night one main event match. We spoke on this theory earlier this week, but Cody Rhodes basically bought and gifted four Rolex watches that had the number 40 engraved on them. He had one for himself, one for Seth, one for Roman, and one for The Rock. Roman was seen wearing his at the 2024 WWE Hall of Fame, but it looks like The Rock decided to return the watch Cody gave him right back to Cody during that Raw after WrestleMania promo. A lot of fans are wondering that if it's true, and if that's what The Rock handed to Cody, then why would he do such a thing and return a WrestleMania 40 gift like that from Cody Rhodes? Well, maybe it was The Rock's way of telling Cody Rhodes to hold on to this watch and gift it to him only after they complete their entire journey and story together in WWE. The Rock probably thought it was way too early to start celebrating and handing out gifts, so he politely returned the gift to Cody Rhodes, basically implying that Cody can give this watch back to him once The Rock returns and once they fully wrap up their story with one another. Like The Rock said in the Raw after WrestleMania exchange with Cody Rhodes, Cody's story with Roman Reigns is over, but his story with The Rock is only just beginning. So maybe that's why The Rock returned the watch to Cody Rhodes, basically telling him to hold on to it until they reach the end. So until they flat out explain what the gift was and what it was about, that fan theory appears to be the best explanation for what this exchange was. Cody Rhodes is about to have his first challenger be revealed for WWE Backlash. A number one contenders match will take place soon between LA Knight and AJ Styles. And considering that Cody is the ultimate babyface, you obviously want to put him up against top heels. So that's what makes it seem like AJ Styles will definitely be Cody's challenger at Backlash. Doing a babyface versus babyface match at Backlash between LA Knight and Cody Rhodes just doesn't seem like the direction they would head in. So AJ Styles versus Cody Rhodes for the WWE title is most likely a lock for Backlash. It's a fresh matchup, and someone that Cody hasn't faced at all within the last few years of returning to WWE. So it's an exciting matchup, and would be an explosive start for Cody Rhodes' WWE title run. There was also some major advancements to the Rey Mysterio and LWO storyline, the LWO was successful at WrestleMania 40, but that win doesn't erase what happened on the SmackDown before WrestleMania, where new LWO member Dragon Lee was mysteriously attacked backstage and lost his spot of tagging with Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania. The Judgment Day and Legato Del Fantasma have both said that they had nothing to do with the attack on Dragon Lee, and how if they did, they would have owned it. And assuming that these two factions are being truthful, that's extremely concerning, because those were the main heels who had issues with LWO. If they didn't do it, this is more looking like an inside job from within the LWO, and Carlito poking out as the main top suspect. And so far, Rey Mysterio can't see the truth. Rey had a backstage promo where he basically said that he knows Santos is lying, and he knows he's behind the Dragon Lee attack. Rey Mysterio then said a few interesting lines that he had everyone thinking that those lines would come up to bite Carlito or whatever LWO member attacked Dragon Lee more down the line. Rey said that no matter how much you tried to hide it, the truth will always come out and how karma will always come for people who do you wrong. 
Rey Mysterio might not have known it at the exact time of that backstage promo, but the Dragon Lee attacker could have been right there standing beside him, and he basically just sent some of those shots to them, saying that truth will always come out and karma would always come for that person. So maybe Rey's lines there also have some foreshadowing to how this story could unfold. Whoever's trying to cover up the Dragon Lee attack, they can only get away with it for so long and that the truth will eventually break free. Sure, the Judgment Day and Legato del Fantasma are heel factions and their word shouldn't be trusted, but they appear to be telling the truth here, that they had no part in the attack. So as the weeks go on, maybe Rey will learn that the heel factions are telling the truth and maybe that's when Rey will start investigating within the LWO. It doesn't seem like this story will be ending anytime soon. It looks like it'll keep going until the truth comes out with the Dragon Lee attack. Was it Carlito? Was it Andrade? Was it another one of the LWO members? Only time will tell. Tama Tonga had a very intriguing line to say about Paul Heyman that's stirring up a lot of conversation and theories. After Paul Heyman came out to the locker room from visiting the beaten down Jimmy Uso, Tonga came up to him and said that everything that happened to Jimmy was by orders of the tribal chief. Now, under ordinary times, we understand that line is being a reference to Roman Reigns, but Heyman made it extremely clear that everything that happened on the April 12th edition of SmackDown was not orders of Roman Reigns. In Paul Heyman's promo, he literally revealed to us what Roman's exact orders were. Heyman said that Roman didn't want to blame anyone or take it out on each other, he just wanted the bloodline to take accountability for losing everything at WrestleMania 40. So Roman just wanted peace and accountability within the bloodline. But moments later, we see Solo Sokoa take out Jimmy Uso and bring in Tonga. Two big things that Roman never made any orders for. So when Solo and Tonga say everything was made by orders of the tribal chief, they're clearly referring to a tribal chief that's not Roman. So in that case, we have two real options for who the second tribal chief could be. It's either Solo Sokoa himself that's calling himself the new tribal chief, or Solo and Tonga are taking orders from someone as high as The Rock, who's ordering that Jimmy hit and all the other events of April 12th. Like we mentioned during the last breakdown, this is leading towards the original three Bloodline members to reunite and actually be a babyface force going up against The Rock and Solo's rogue version of the Bloodline. And even with his absence, it looks like WWE already started building up that Roman Reigns babyface turn on April 12th. The Roman Reigns character wasn't blaming anyone for the loss or willing to punish any family member. He accepted it and said that he took his eye off the ball for a moment. So Roman owning it like that and not pushing the blame on anyone else seemed like a very honorable and babyface stance on losing the world title. It's what Sola Sokoa and Tonga did that appears to be the heel route of handling the matter. So as strange as it is, Roman is not the cruel leader here anymore. Roman is actually the reasonable one here, while Solo, The Rock, and Tonga are doing things wrong. Some fans think that we're far from the end and that more Bloodline family members will have to pick a side on this civil war. It was reported during WrestleMania weekend that Jacob Fatu has also recently signed with WWE. So we can expect him to eventually join in and pick a side. We also can't forget about Ava as well and how she'll need to pick a side. But considering she's The Rock's daughter after all, it's pretty safe to assume which side she'll be siding with. So the odds may really be stacked against the original core members of the Bloodline, Roman Reigns and the Usos. It's going to be pretty bizarre to see Roman and the Usos, the original three that terrorized WWE for the past few years, suddenly become the heroes of the story to take down their evil and rogue family members. But this is looking like it's going to be possibly one of the best chapters of the Bloodline story. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.